Hello there guys, welcome to another My Live video. So um this is your um, FC Estania uh, versus Manchester United uh, Europa League uh, preview. Uh, of course, uh, this is um, our fifth uh, match um, in the group stage. Uh, of course, uh, regardless of um, what um, happens um, in this game, uh, obviously, you know, we are already um, into the knockout stages um, of uh, the Europa League. Uh, so, obviously, you know, that's uh, very, very um, good. Uh, we are sitting at uh, top um, group L. You know, we have uh, won uh, three games um, out of four, so we have registered 10 points uh, from um, possible uh, 12. But this is a game, you know, Manchester United uh, should uh, win um, against uh, FC um, Estania. Um, FC Estania, of course, um, have not uh, yet uh, registered um, a single uh, point um, in the uh, group stages of the, the Europa League. They have lost um, all uh, their uh, four uh, games. And um, obviously, the reverse fixture you know, um, was obviously you know, 1 0 uh, to Man United um, at Old Trafford. Of course, uh, Mason uh, Greenwood um, had scored uh, the, uh, the only uh, goal um, of uh, the game. And I did say, you know, from the overarching view on it all, I think, you know, the Europa League is definitely a priority uh, for us uh, this season because I do believe um, it is um, our only uh, route uh, to Champions League football uh, for uh, next season because obviously you know reflecting um, on the league you know we are around uh, nine uh, points uh, behind uh, top four so I am very very sceptical about us uh, getting uh, that top four uh, this season um, you know I, I wouldn't fully disregard it but you know it's uh, very very um, unlikely you now um, it is uh, going to um, happen so I don't think you know we're going to get uh, that uh, top four uh, this season uh, by the way um, I just uh, want to uh, confirm um, as well that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer um, has named um, a young uh, squad uh, to travel uh, to Kazakhstan. Um, it's also been confirmed uh, that Nicky Butt um, has travelled uh, to uh, Kazakhstan uh, with the first team uh, squad. Uh, but Michael Carrick and Kieran uh, McKenna um, have, cu have currently uh, remained um, in Manchester. So I just uh, want to uh, confirm uh, that uh, with you uh, guys. But the game um, on Thursday um, is a 10 to 4 uh, kickoff. So um, it is um, an earlier uh, kickoff. Um, but I do believe that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, will uh, make um, a lot of um, alterations um, in the squad. Obviously, you know, like I said, Solskjaer sees like, you know, the Cowbell Cup in the Europa League of, as more uh, chances um, as giving, you know, youngsters, you know, uh, more um, experience. So he will make a um, variety um, of changes. Um, I think, you know, we need to see a performance um, against FC Estania. Totally comparison, you know, to uh, what we uh, saw um, against uh, Sheffield uh, United um, at the weekend because I thought it was very, very poor um, against uh, Sheffield uh, United um, on Sunday. Um, I thought, you know, we only had a good 10-minute spell. Um, don't forget, you know, we did score uh, three times uh, within uh, the space um, of seven minutes. Uh, but, then, you know, that still uh, wasn't um, enough. You know, Solskjaer, you know, did take some positives out of the game against Sheffield United. You know, he was obviously pleased there uh, with the comeback. Um, it did give us a glimpse um, of the Alex Ferguson area by the way, because we did uh, produce um, a lot of uh, comebacks under the Ferguson um, era. And um, <coughs> uh, plus, um, yeah, he was pleased uh, with the comeback and that. And also he said, you know, the young players um, had learned um, a valuable uh, lesson. You know, it was good to see, you know, Mason Greenwood getting his name on the score sheet. Obviously, you know, that's his first uh, Premier League goal uh, for uh, Man United. He has now in total scored uh, four, senior go four senior goals for the football club. Um, I do believe he will be a uh, starting um, against uh, FC Estania. Well, it's very, very probable anywhere. Um, Brandon Williams, of course, uh, scoring um, his first uh, goal um, in the uh, senior uh, squad as well. You know, also his uh, first uh, goal, and goal um, in the Premier League. I do believe, you know, he should be uh, starting uh, this game or um, at least uh, being um, involved. And yet again, you know, Marcus Rashford, you know, uh, scoring, you know, he got um, a goal um, and an assist um, against uh, Sheffield uh, United. And I've been very, very impressed there uh, with Marcus Rashford recently, like I took into account, you know, um, he has uh, really uh, rejuvenated um, himself um, because I know for the vast majority of this season, um, I have uh, been uh, criticising uh, Marcus Rashford, but I think definitely in the last six or seven games, he's really uh, stepped, stepped up to the plate. But I still said, you know, um, during, you know, Marcus Rashford's, uh, Rashford's long uh, bad spell, I still said, you know, um, he's a uh, long term, uh, you know, solution uh, for Manchester United. And, you know, um, he's um, only uh, 22 uh, years of age. You know, comparing Rashford and Mason Greenwood, you know, I think they are totally comparison. You know, they are two different players in that. Obviously, Rashford's more experienced than him. But I do believe, you know, if Greenwood does keep the consistency up and, you know, um, I think, you know, as he develops more, I think he will eventually, you know, overcome Marcus. 
because Rashford, and you know, eventually, you know, come a better uh, goal scorer uh, than Rashford. Um, I'm not too sure about Martial if he'll overcome Martial, but I can assure that you know, and we will um, overcome uh, Marcus Rashford. But we was closer uh, to winning our first game uh, this season uh, from obviously, you know, uh, from um, a losing uh, position. Now, uh, but for 80 minutes, you know, Sheffield United uh, totally dominated the game. They showed great attacking intent. You know, they did uh, create um, a lot of uh, chances um, in the game. David De Gea, of course, um, had to uh, make uh, some uh, world-class uh, saves. Um, but the game, you know, did um, end up, you know, 3-3. Uh, Obviously, you know, we'll be happy that we didn't lose the game. But I think, you know, Sheffield United, you know, would have uh, been more uh, disappointed than us because, obviously, you know, Sheffield United uh, were winning uh, the game uh, by uh, two goals uh, to nil. But definitely, you know, um, our league form uh, does uh, need to um, improve because I think we've won as many. We've won as many. Or we have won more um, in the cup games than we've actually, you know, uh, won um, in the league and that. But you've still got to say that, you know, where uh, the league um, is um, priority. But, you know, in the league now, we are currently uh, sitting uh, ninth. Um, like I said, you know, we've registered 17 points from a possible 39 and we know where uh, that's uh, nowhere near uh, good enough uh, to our uh, standards. And we've won four, we've drawn five um, and we have uh, lost four. And, you know, obviously, you know, we have enjoyed um, our worst start to a Premier League season uh, for um, over uh, 30 uh, years. But to be fair, in the Europa League, we've done uh, really, really well on that. You know, we haven't even conceded a, conceded a goal yet um, in the Europa League. Um, you know, I think we've scored, well, what was it, one against FC Estania, uh, one against Paris and Belgrade, three, um, that's five. Um, <laughs> so I think we scored around uh, five um, or six uh, goals uh, so far um, in the Europa League. But even though we've enjoyed um, a disastrous uh, start uh, to the season, you know, um, I still uh, do uh, believe that, you know, we are uh, good enough uh, to win uh, the Europa League. So if we were to win the Europa League, analysing it, you know, um, I would uh, say, uh, you know, uh, we have um, had um, a good uh, season in that. Um, I also want to confirm uh, that, you know, players um, are uh, coming uh, back uh, from injury, you know, which is a uh, very, very um, good uh, news. Um, Tuan Zebe and Luke Shaw um, have also, you know, travelled uh, to Kazakhstan. Uh, don't forget, you know, Tuan Zebe uh, has been out with a hip injury. Uh, Luke Shaw um, has been um, out uh, with a hamstring injury. So take that um, into um, account. Luke Shaw hasn't, hasn't actually, you know, played uh, since uh, the 2-1 uh, defeat to Crystal Palace um, earlier on um, in the season. But we are I'm um, all um, aware um, of how much of an imperative uh, player uh, that Luke Shaw is. Um, but yeah, you know, Solskjaer did actually you know, confirm, he confirmed uh, in his press conference you now uh, prior to the uh, game against Sheffield United, he did say that, you know, players had returned to back to training. He said Matic had returned to training, you know, so to, uh, to Anzebe and Luke Shaw. Also, it did confirm that Eric Bay, Diego Dalot um, and Fosu Mensu uh, were all training, but they uh, trained them away uh, from uh, the rest um, of the squad. Matic has been out of a minor problem, um, you know, uh, Bay's been out with an injury. Um, he's obviously you not know, been out uh, since uh, pre-season because he initially sustained uh, the injury through pre-season. Diego De Lott, um has actually you know, sustained uh, quite um, a few um, injuries this season. And um, and um, Fosu Mensu has uh, been um, out uh, with an injury. You know, he's in, he's been out with injury you know, for quite some time. Um, he has. Um, I think he initially sustained the injury whilst he was on uh, loan uh, with Fulham. Death, don't forget. Uh, but you know, um, he's had it. You know, uh, quite um, a long time. But yeah, he caught the confirmed that. You know, he's uh, back um, in training. Um, we know obviously that Tom Way is not going to be uh, playing um, on Thursday. Um, obviously, you know, that Tom Way um, has been um, uh, out uh, with injury. Uh, he initially sustained um, his injury uh, in our last Europa League game because obviously you know, we beat parties in Belgrade comfortably uh, by uh, three goals. Uh, and I've got to say, analysing it, that's but that's the best performance um, in the Europa League uh, this season, definitely. Um, but yeah, he sustained the injury in that and then obviously he played in the game against Brighton but his injury you know, um, actually you know, reoccur reoccurred in the Brighton game just before uh, the international uh, break. So um, Tom Inway, um has now got um, an ankle injury he initially had to uh, withdraw uh, from the Scotland squad, you know, during uh, the international uh, break. He had initial scans on his ankle, obviously, uh, to find uh, the extent um, of the injury. Um, and it's actually now uh, severe, um, his injury. So it's been confirmed that McTomway um, is going to be um, out um, until, I think, uh, Christmas and that. But like I said, analysing his performances this season, he has been very, very good and... You know, but Tom Way um, has uh, been a um, revelation. You know, I've got I'm sceptical about him. You know, being long term solution for Man United. You know, can he keep uh, the consistency up? You know, could he emulate 
emulating to a Galactico player. You know, he's far from a Galactico player um, at the moment, but he's done uh, really, really um, well uh, this season um, as McTomin where... Um, Rojo's obviously not still injured as well. Uh, take that into account. I think he sustained um, an injury, you know, uh, during uh, the international uh, break. Um, a bit more additional um, information, by the way, um, was updated um, by uh, Paul Pogba. Um, I did uh, give you uh, the news uh, regarding uh, Paul Pogba um, this morning. Um, obviously, you know, it did recently. Well, reports were emerging out saying that, you know, Paul Pogba's uh, refusing to play for Manchester United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He's refusing, you know, to uh, play for us. Um, uh, despite uh, being uh, fit, uh, there has been reports allegedly saying that he could have been uh, faking um, his injury. Because obviously, you know, he's trying to uh, force a uh, move uh, to uh, Real Madrid um, in January. And of course, um, it isn't uh, long uh, now um, until uh, January, you know, just um, over um, a month. Uh, but Paul Pogba has basically got the same perception, you know, now as what he had for the entirety of the summer. Because obviously, you know, his um, preference uh, was a uh, move uh, to Real Madrid uh, during uh, the course of um, the summer and that. Um, I did say the main factor reason why Real Madrid uh, didn't uh, get him is because obviously, you know, reflecting him on the substantial amount we put on him, you know, he was very, very adamant he wasn't for sale. But it said, you know, we wanted in the region of around um, £180 million pounds for Paul Pogba. And, you know, Real Madrid, of course, um, had a limit of concerns about that. So, obviously, you know, they were uh, willing uh, to pay it. But I think he'll definitely you know, go to uh, Real Madrid um, in January. If he doesn't go in January, I think um, it would be very, very imminent that he uh, does uh, go uh, next uh, summer, you know, um... But yeah, so he did initially say before the Sheffield United game that Paul Popper um, is expected to be out uh, for um, another uh, three weeks. But this is now turned, uh, this is not, uh, I don't think this is now true because I've just read recent reports and it did say Paul Popper is set to uh, return uh, within uh, the next uh, 10 uh, days and that. Um, but he still definitely you know, wants to uh, leave uh, the football club. Paul Popper um, has been um, out uh, with an ankle injury. Um, you know, he's missed the vast majority of the games uh, this season. You know, Paul Popper um, hasn't uh, played, you know, since uh, the 1-1 one -one draw uh, with Arsenal. Well, uh, that was his uh, last uh, league match. But, you know, we know the difference um, he does uh, make um, in that midfield. You know, Paul Popper, like I said, is into his fourth season now um, as a Man United player, you know, since he rejoined uh, from Juventus back in uh, 2016. And analysing the vast majority of his tenure with Man United, he has been mainly inconsistent, you know, um, in comparison to his time uh, when he was um, at Juventus, because he did enjoy uh, for a uh, good uh, years um, in Turin and that. Um, obviously, there was rumours that emerged out during the summer about him possibly, you know, uh, making a return uh, back to uh, Turin. Um, he said the other week, like I updated you on, like I do keep mentioning on a regular basis, Basis that uh, Paul Pogba, my dad, is uh, ankle cast uh, removed. Uh, he travel allegedly travelled to Amsterdam to get his uh, ankle cast uh, removed, and he did say no. Well, he's uh, basically you no know, closer to uh, recovering uh, from injury. But some people have actually said, you know, we've seen to have looked uh, better uh, without uh, Paul Pogba in that midfield. Because I think the likes of Tommy Way and recently uh, Fred, you know, um, he's. Um, you know, um, hit uh, the ground uh, running. You know, Fred's been um revelation. You now uh, quite uh, recently, and to be honest with you, um, I think he's a uh, full full uh, Pogba's uh, position uh, really really well. But Solskjaer didn't actually confirm uh, anywhere that Fred uh, will take uh, Paul Pogba's uh, position uh, for um a while and that. Um, obviously Fred and Tom were totally comparison to Paul Pogba because obviously when Paul Pogba's um on form, you know, he's arguably you now uh, one of the uh, best uh, midfielders um in the world. But for my perception on it, you know, I would still give uh, Fred uh, more uh, time um, at the club. I know quite a lot of Man United fans have got strong reservations about him. I will agree on the aspect, you know, that we did um, overpay for him because we paid, you know, uh, just um, under uh, £50 million, or was it £50 million to him uh, last summer uh, from uh, Shat to uh, the Nest, but recently um, has uh, done uh, really, really um, well. Um, but, you know, regardless of whether Paul Popper stays um, or goes um, anywhere, you know, we've obviously you know, still uh, got to um, address uh, that uh, midfield. You know, I think, you know, we need uh, two uh, midfielders. I think we need an attacking midfielder. Um, we also need a defensive midfielder, but we've definitely uh, got to uh, recruit um, a replacement uh, for um, Ander uh, Marrera and that. Um, you know, Pogba's still got two years left on his current contract to Man United, by the way. There is also an option to extend his contract by further year. And Pogba is on a substantial amount at the club. You know, he's on around uh, 290 grand a week. So in that aspect, um, he's uh, one of the uh, highest uh, played uh, players. So, you know, obviously analysing it anywhere, reflecting um, on the amount of um, injuries uh, we've had uh, 
uh, this season. Solskjaer um, has had to uh, make um, a lot of um, alterations um, in the squad. <laughs> And all that, but it's like you know, one step forward, two steps back, two steps back with Man United. You know, uh, you know, at one at one point, you know, we seem to be hitting form, we're getting good results, and we're performing well. And then you know, we just then you know, on our, and then after you know, we just seem to have fallen apart um, again. And that was a prime example um, against the uh, Sheffield uh, United and that because I thought we was in a good run of form uh, before uh, the Sheffield uh, United game. You know, we'd won five of our uh, last uh, six uh, games um, in all competitions. Um, but my overarching view on it basically, you know, Solskjaer is not the right man uh, to elevate uh, Manchester United forward. You know, recently, you know, Gary Neville um, has come out and he's, you know, give his um, overarching view um, on everything. Um, you know, he actually you know, believes that um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, needs to be ruthless in the January transfer market, you know, to obviously, you know, prevent him, you know, from uh, getting uh, the sack uh, by uh, Man United and that. Because obviously Neville and, you know, Solskjaer himself, um, obviously, you know, realise, you know, that he is um, under um, pressure um, at the football club. Especially, you know, reflecting back before the uh, Liverpool game, uh, Solskjaer, you know, was um, under uh, serious intense pressure, serious intense uh, pressure um, at the football club and that. And, um, Obviously, you know, if we uh, do uh, decide uh, to sack him, obviously he's gonna it's gonna cost us a substantial amount to get rid of him anywhere. You know, I think we'd probably have to pay around. I don't know what what would pay, but it would be a substantial amount. You know, I don't think we'd have to, probably have to pay as much. You know, as we did do to get rid of Jose Mourinho. Solskjaer's annual salary is a uh, seven and a half uh, million. By the way, just wanted to uh, put that um, into um, account. But I can definitely assure that Solskjaer will not see his three year contract out with Man United, and I am uh, very very sceptical um, about that because when Solskjaer had been uh, given uh, the job uh, permanently, um, he had uh, been uh, given him um, three year uh, contract in March. Um, earlier on uh, this year and I think you know that was one of the mistakes uh, Man United did you know uh, giving uh, Molly Gunnar Solskjaer uh, the job uh, and I think we've made um, several mistakes um, in the last uh, six um, or uh, seven uh, years um, but yeah you know definitely you know uh, our recruitment has uh, got to um, improve because I think our recruitment um, has been uh, very uh, poor uh, for uh, several years and that. And obviously, you know, with us not being in Champions League football, obviously it's going to be hard uh, for us uh, to attract uh, players uh, to the um, elite uh, level. Um, but it's very imperative that we do get the right calibre players to Manchester United next year. You know, I think we need at least five to six more signings. You could arguably say maybe even more than that if we are to be back to being a competitive elite level football club and if we are, you know, to be a future title contenders. And next year, you know, like I said, we've got to um, address um, all the deficiencies um, in the squad. I was reading recent reports and it did say Solskjaer is going to be given around £100 million to spend in January. Um... I think two hundred million pounds in total, so hundred million in January, two hundred million next summer. You know, there is an element of concern about that, though. You know, is two hundred million pounds going to be enough for us? You know, to bring the right number of players that we do want in. Is it going to be enough for us? You know, to address all the deficiencies in, deficiencies in the squad. It's basically you know dependent on you know um how where we are with our recruitment. You know, we're going to be sensible with it. Um, or you know, we're going to um overpay uh, for players. But he did recently suggest out that Solskjaer you know, could actually you know make loan signings or make some uh, loan signings um in January. But I think we'll look to sign one or two players in January. But I think from my own perception, we'll do the vast uh, majority of our transfer business uh, next summer. But I think, you know, Solskjaer may get to January, but I don't think, you know, he uh, will be um, here um, at the end um, of the season because, you know, I just don't uh, see uh, things uh, turning around. Like I've said on recent videos, if we can, you know, have a good run, if we can do really, really well from now until January or until the end of the season, then Solskjaer, you know, may be here until the end of the season, then maybe, you know, um, my perceptions, you know, uh, will start uh, to change. But I just know he's uh, not uh, the right uh, man for Man United. Don't forget, not too long ago, um, Ed Woodward uh, did um, a short uh, that his uh, job um, is safe and that. Um, but definitely, no, you know, with our uh, bad run, with our bad results and bad performances for the vast majority of this season, you know, Solskjaer is definitely now um, accountable uh, for some of that because you've got to say for the vast uh, majority um, of the season anywhere, uh, Solskjaer um, has been uh, tactically uh, naive. Um, you know, in some games, you know, we have showed a lot of uh, tactical flexibility, uh, which um, is a positive. You know, Solskjaer's obviously, you know, tried a few different elements. You know, a prime example is obviously, you know, tried um, a few uh, different uh, formations. Um
he's tried them um, a few uh, different uh, formations um, and all that. Um, you know, but yeah, he has uh, tried them um, a few uh, different um, elements. But you know, obviously, some of his substitutions this season have been questionable. You know, these question marks around him. You know, why is he? Why does he keep playing Ashley Young? Because um, he's played Ashley on on, reg on a regular uh, basis uh, this season. And that and you know, I just think you know the expectations are too high for me basically. Because I didn't as you say um, at the start um, of this season that our expectations this season uh, will be to finish in that top four. Um, I think and anywhere our aspirations will be that top four in the next uh, couple of uh, seasons anywhere because obviously analysing our squad um, at the moment it isn't good enough to win the league um, it isn't even good enough to mount um, any kind of title ch challenge up you know you know let alone uh, win uh, the league and that um, but it is going to take um, it's a it's going to be a long process and a massive uh, rebuild um, is definitely nowhere needed um, at Manchester United uh, but I think I'll you know, he can't just blame Solskjaer, you know, I think obviously a lot of the blame stems from the board as well, you know, they're definitely accountable, and you know, we need to see a variety of changes at the football club, you know, you know, get rid of the current board, because the board's a liability, like I said, the board needs to assure structural changes at the club, but I don't think you can rely on them to do that, we need to get rid of Ed Woodward, despite the fact that he recently, you know, assured that Man United uh, will sign Galactico players next year, um, but he replicates the board definitely. I still think there's players at Manchester United uh, that are basically now uh, not uh, good enough, so we've definitely now got to uh, get uh, rid um, of some players and that. I think we need to get rid of an, uh, another four um, or five more, if I'm going to be quite honest with you. But I know obviously a lot of players um, have left uh, since um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's arrival. Obviously, analysing it in the summer, you know, the vast majority of our players who left obviously now went to Italy. So obviously now um, Italy uh, was um, a very uh, popular uh, destination. That, but I think you know the problematic players are definitely now uh, uh, Ashley Young. He needs to be moved on. Jones needs to be moved on. Uh, Matic needs to be moved on next year some people say you know we also uh, need to uh, get rid of uh, Jesse Lingard so yeah there's still another, definitely another 4 or 5 more need to go perhaps you know maybe um, even uh, Marcus uh, Rojo um, you could say as well maybe we need to uh, get um, a director um, of football in uh, that's another one of the mistakes uh, that Man United did make wasn't uh, was not getting um, a director um, of football in because I did say you know that's one of the structural changes that we uh, do uh, need um, at the football club um and maybe, you know, Solskjaer would have been back tomorrow if we'd have got that uh, direct to them of footballing. But like I said, there was quite a few uh, former uh, Manchester United uh, players uh, linked to uh, with that uh, role um, anywhere. Obviously, there was speculation about Edwin van der Sar before. But obviously, now he's out of the equation because he recently, you know, um, extended um, his contract uh, with Ajax, um, as you were um, all uh, knowing that. Um, but yeah, but... Like I said, you know, there is some um, aspects of me, you know, uh, that do uh, credit uh, Solskjaer. Like I said, he recommended, you know, three good players to the squad during the summer. I just want to take into account that's, there's a, that's a prime example there. For 200 million, you know, you could probably get three or four players because, you know, during the summer, we got three players for uh, just under um, £150 million. Pounds. You know, we recommended Daniel James in and Wan Masaka and uh, Harry uh, Maguire. And they've all um, enjoyed their fantastic starts uh, to their uh, Manchester United uh, careers. Uh, I think especially Daniel James, as you know, he's actually you know, been a um, revelation as Daniel James. Um, I think he's been a revelation. And I'm actually you know, surprised uh, with the amount of games you know, uh, that he has uh, played uh, for uh, Man United this season. When we signed him in the summer, like I've said, I expected him to play games. But it's not not as uh, many uh, to the extent you know um, as he has done. Um, I didn't think you know anyway he would have uh, settled in uh, straight um, away. But I still say you know Daniel James um, is still a prospect and um, he needs uh, time uh, to develop and that. But fair play to him if he keeps the good run of form up, you know his uh, valuation you know uh, will uh, persistently uh, grow. Um, but fair play to him. Um, like I said, I'm Wamasaki. Some people say he's been one of um, our most uh, consistent uh, signings uh, so far. Um, and Harry Maguire um, has done really, really well. Uh, we did overpay for Harry Maguire. I think we paid around, was it £70 million pounds from up front uh, with uh, £10 uh, million, um, in add-ons, which did potentially rise it to £80 million. Pounds. So he is the most expensive defender in the world and the second most um, expensive uh, signing um, at the football club and all that. Um, but yeah, to be fair, Solskjaer you know, did recommend uh, three uh, good uh, players uh, to the squad, definitely. Um, he has also you know, got a lot of uh, trustworthy um, when he's a uh, young um, upcoming uh, players in that. Because we've got these, um, a lot of uh, young uh, players um, in our squad, uh, you know, 
that are, you know, developing them and trying to um, improve in that. You know, Solskjaer um, did obviously, you know, assure this season that, you know, the young players, you know, would get given their opportunities. And to be fair, Solskjaer has done what he said. And when he initially got recommended into Man United anywhere, you know, Solskjaer did say, you know, uh, that everybody, you know, uh, will uh, get uh, given uh, the chance in that. Obviously, I've got some element of concerns about, you know, some of the young upcoming players. Um, I think, you know, we're need to get rid of a couple of them next year. Uh, so if we could do that, you know, that would be a very, very um, beneficial um, indeed. But I can assure that the likes of Mason Greenwood, Brandon Williams and Tuan Zebe, you know, will will uh, become uh, successes um, at the football club and that, uh, definitely. Um, regarding Brandon Williams, um, he's definitely our first choice left back now or should be. Um, left back's definitely being confirmed because I think Brandon Williams um, is a better solution than Luke Shaw. He's definitely a much uh, better uh, solution uh, than Ashley Young. We have got a variety of full-backs um, in our team, but Brandon Williams has done well. And I said if he keeps a good run of form up, you know, he will um, earn more uh, first-team uh, promotions. Uh, but fair play to him, and he signed a new contract not too long ago. Um, he's um, only uh, the age of 19 in that. But he, I think he will be uh, playing um, in the game um, on Thursday. Um, and I thought he had a really, really good game against Sheffield United. Scored a good goal as well. Had a great game against Brighton before the international break. Um, he's had a good couple of games in the Europa League. So he deserved her to keep um, his uh, players um, in the team, definitely. Uh, Andres Pereira, um, I've got some element of concerns about him. Um, I think his comparison to Mason Green would definitely... Um, there again, I've got the same perception on Chong. I think he's obviously comparison to Mason Green with Brandon Williams and, you know, two hands that being that. Um, but Pereira's had some good games this season. You know, some people believe, you know, that he isn't uh, good enough uh, for uh, Man United. But actually, Andrews Pereira uh, was playing um, as a centre midfielder in the 3-3 uh, uh, draw uh, with Sheffield uh, United um, on Sunday. But for the vast majority of this season, he's actually, you know, been operating um, in that uh, playmaker's uh, role. Um, but yeah, these are a lot of young players in the squad and I think, you know, Solskjaer um, is keen on still continuing the policy of recruiting young players and that, you know, like he did do during uh, the summer. So he's looking to recommend more young players and even though we have got now a lot of uh, young uh, players um, in the squad, definitely. Uh, but um, yeah... But, you know, it uh, doesn't really matter, you know, what happens um, against FC Estonia. But I think, you know, I do presume, you know, that Man United uh, should uh, win uh, the game. And that um, I don't know what formation will go with, to be quite honest with you. Um, obviously, you know, on a regular basis this season, Solskjaer has gone with a 4-2-3-1 formation. And it, we know it hasn't, that system hasn't really worked out. On a couple of occasions, um, he has uh, gone uh, with three um, at the back. So he's gone, like, with a 3-5-2, the 3-4-1-2. Obviously, against Sheffield United, he went with a rarity formation that he doesn't use re very often anywhere as far as I know he went with a 3-4-3 uh, three, three. Um, a couple of times he's also gone uh, with a 4-3-3 three, three and that but uh, you could arguably say maybe we do uh, look uh, better uh, with three um, at the back but he's, we were tactically naive in that first half definitely um, against uh, Sheffield uh, United and that um, but um yeah, but I think you know we definitely you know uh, need um, a change um, of management um at the football club definitely you know there has been like a couple of managers um on our agenda you know who could uh, replace uh, Solskjaer um at the football club you know obviously now uh, the rumours um are reiterating um, about um Richo uh, Pochettino because obviously the rumours had uh, gone away uh, for uh, so long um obviously now Pochettino got sat has been sacked by Tottenham, he got sacked uh, last uh, Tuesday. Um, obviously now these talks about him be, you know, possibly you know, becoming um, our next uh, permanent uh, manager and that. And I think a lot of Man United fans uh, do uh, believe anyway, you know, he would be, you know, uh, the right, uh, you know, candidate uh, for uh, Man United and that. Um, I think it's definitely no totally a comparison uh, to uh, Solskjaer, he's a uh, Pochettino, um, you know, he's obviously more experienced than Solskjaer, um, you know, my only element of concern really about Mitchell Pochettino is that, you know, um, he hasn't uh, won out um, in terms um, of silverware. So, obviously, you know, that's uh, my element um, of concern. He's good at developing young players like he's proven in his, proven in his five years or so uh, with Tottenham and that. Uh, but Tottenham did confirm last week they come out with a public statement to explain the variety of reasons why, you know, where they did um, end him. Because, obviously, you know, Tottenham um, have enjoyed them and really a difficult uh, start uh, to the season um, um, and all that. But he's a good manager, Pochettino, you know, he enjoyed five uh, years uh, with Tottenham, um, you know, like I said, 
Uh, before he was at Tottenham, he enjoyed him a good short tenure with Southampton. Before that, you know, he was um, Espanyol. So he's been managing for uh, just um, over um, a decade um, as Mauricio Pochettino. I think he, uh, throughout his playing career, you know, he played for around uh, nearly uh, 20 years and that. Um, but don't, don't forget, reflecting back, you know, um, after the sacking um, Jose Mourinho in December um, of last year, you know, we went in uh, for Mauricio Pochettino. He was actually um, our primary uh, candidate, don't forget. Uh, Pochettino, by the way, Tottenham did sign uh, sack him, you know, whilst he was on a contract with them because Pochettino signed a five-year contract with Tottenham in the summer of 2018 with around uh, £8.5 million pounds a year. Um, I said the couple of reasons, you know, why we, you know, decided uh, to go uh, with Solskjaer um, instead is because obviously Solskjaer knows, you know, the culture of the football club and that, um, and also to, you know, and was um, a cheap solution, cheaper solution than Pochettino, because uh, we'd have had to pay around, what, 30-odd million in compensation to get Pochettino in, as you know, we didn't really pay that much, you know, to uh, recommend Solskjaer in uh, from uh, Mould and that. But I can assure you, it will not last. Um, I think, you know, for, for, for Solskjaer's managerial tenure to be saved at the club, I think we've got to win uh, at least two of our uh, next uh, three uh, games, you know, and all that. If we don't, if we don't uh, meet that expectation, um, then I think, you know, Solskjaer, you know, will be uh, finished um, at Manchester United. Um even though the club obviously, you know, don't want to finish him, you know, because we haven't really got uh, the structure to keep uh, sacking our uh, managers. You know, Solskjaer um, is our fourth permanent manager uh, since uh, the Alex uh, Ferguson um, era and that. You know, three managers have gone since the Ferguson era. You know, David Moyes, of course, uh, left uh, the club um, after uh, 10 months. Um, he left uh, the club um, after uh, 10 months. You know, Ferguson was was obviously the one at the time who recommended him in. And that's, you know, the mistake Ferguson made. And that's uh, the only mistake uh, Ferguson made, rather, way. Um, then, obviously, Louis van Gaal came in. You know, he won the FA Cup with Man United, but obviously it wasn't enough. His philosophy wasn't right for the club anyway. So he went after, like, just over a year. And then, obviously, Mourinho um, enjoyed uh, two and a half uh, years uh, with Man United. But I obviously, you know, give you the variety of reasons uh, why it didn't uh, work out um, under uh, Jose Mourinho. Um, because, like I said, he had bad disputes with the board. He had uh, bad uh, disputes uh, with the top players. You know, some of the, you know, you know, the board went back in the signings, you know, that he wanted to uh, recommend in uh, to the football club uh, last summer and that. But Mourinho did win the Europe League and the League Cup um, in his uh, first uh, season uh, with Man United and also spent a substantial amount at the club. You know, spent, was it 400 or just under £400 million pounds, um, on 11 uh, players. Um, and you take into account now Solskjaer's inheriting the vast majority of them, you know, Solskjaer is still in the process of rebuilding this Man United squad because, you know, uh, taking into account, you know, uh, these are um, only uh, three uh, players uh, that are uh, currently uh, missing that. But, you know, Jose Mourinho, obviously, you know, he's currently now in his second game as Tottenham manager. You know, they're playing Olympiacos now. I don't know what the score is. I haven't uh, looked. Uh, but it got off to a good start, you know, with, uh, you know, uh, the 3-2 win against West Ham um, at the weekend and that. And I probably believe that Jose Mourinho, you know, will succeed um, at Tottenham. Overall, he's a really, really good manager. You know, he's managed various clubs. He's won 25 major honours, you know, so far, you know, throughout his uh, managerial uh, career. So, still, um, he's a very, very um, good uh, manager. Um, he's got a contract with Tottenham till 2022, or is it 2023? He's on around uh, £15 uh, million uh, pounds a year and that. Um, but, yeah, I do presume he'll do uh, really, really um, well uh, with Tottenham. But like I was saying, regarding Mitchell Pochettino, there isn't only talks about him coming to Man United. You know, there's also uh, been rumours of, rumours of him, you know, possibly going to Arsenal because obviously, you know, a vast majority of Arsenal fans are demanding Unai Emery out. Um, he's under um, intense uh, pressure um, at Arsenal. Um, basically, you know, replicates Solskjaer in that aspect because also Solskjaer's under pressure um, at Man United and that. Um, obviously, Arsenal have got a few, uh, you know, managers um, on their um, agenda and that. Um, I will explain more uh, about that um, on my uh, next uh, video and that. Um, also, tomorrow, uh, Solskjaer's uh, press conference uh, reaction uh, will be coming up when he does his press conference building up to the game against FC Estania uh, tomorrow. Obviously, you know, um, I will um, interpret, you know, uh, some of the stuff um, he does uh, mention Um but, um, yeah, so that's what I will uh, basically um, do. But like I've said, you know, um, 
Pochettino's linked to Arsenal. He's also been talks about him, you know, going uh, to Bayern Munich. So I don't think, you know, Pochettino uh, will be a managerless uh, for long. And um, like I said, reflect on the size and the potential of this club, you know, we should be much more um, commanding a position, you know, than we're in now, you know, um, you know, because a lot of money's been invested into the football club over the years in all the managerial areas. It's been since the Ferguson era. We've also, you know, got uh, players um, on big uh, contracts um, at the football club. Um, but, um, yeah. So, yeah, so that's your FC Astani, you know, versus Manchester United preview. And obviously, you know, I wanted to give you all uh, the rest um, of the news. Uh, the press uh, the press conference will be uh, coming up uh, tomorrow uh, by uh, the way. Uh, may not be straight away because um, I have uh, got to uh, go somewhere uh, tomorrow. So it will be uh, later on uh, tomorrow um, afternoon uh, will be uh, the, pre will the uh, press conference uh, reaction um, and all that. Um, But, um, yeah, and, you know, Solskjaer's been here for 11 months. You know, he's, well, nearly 12 months now, so he's nearly uh, been here um, a year. Um, so he's only had a short uh, tenure um, at the moment. But he's actually, you know, been permanent manager now uh, for uh, nearly uh, nine months in that. And, obviously, for the vast majority um, of that uh, nine months, um, it has um, all uh, gone uh, wrong, basically, in that. And, um, you know, but like I said... Yeah, as a ma as a manager now, uh, to as he was as a player, he's totally comparison because I thought he was a great player for us. Uh, but he just hasn't really got that uh, managerial um, experience uh, to the highest uh, level and that. So that's definitely now my um, element um, of concern. So like I said, drop your comments, likes below on the channel, guys. If you do consider a subscriber, um, as always, and take care. God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Thanks for watching.